Did I ever tell you how much I enjoy living in Thailand? This is definitely the best decision I ever made living here. I am happy, happy, happy. <laughs> Why live here? <laughs> I get that asked all the time. I'm very fortunate to live where I do. There's no doubt about it. I've always been a really lucky guy. I think I made some smart decisions in my life. One of the things was going into the U.S. Air Force when I was a young man, and I ended up retiring from that. It's a great condo that I live in. Fortunately, I was able to renovate it and do exactly the way I wanted it. Made it comfortable for me. I have this great view. Now, would it be better if I was in the building behind me? Well, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I did live in that building behind me. That's Park Beach Condominium. And I lived up on the 26th floor for a couple of years and then down on the 20th floor. And it had fantastic views. Life is good. Now, I live on Wagamont Beach in Nakula, uh, Thailand. That's North Pattaya. This area, by many, is considered the place to live. The reason why is because it's normally so quiet here. Now, we have the normal street noise that you would expect, but we're not in the middle of bars and things like that either. And now being low season, we have lots of renovation going on. So you're gonna hear, hear things like drills and, and saws in the background and, and things like that. Fortunately for me though, I have a great patio door that when I close it up, I can't hear any of that. Here's another thing that many people have brought up to me and I, I, I generally appreciate the concern people have noticed my hand shaking, okay? Uh, I do have a condition that's called essential tremors. It was diagnosed maybe 20 years ago. So when I pick up a cup of coffee, for instance, like this here, and I'm trying to drink it, it it's a chore sometimes, it, it actually is. It's a chore not to spill it all over myself. The medication I take for my essential tremors is life-changing. There's no doubt about it. They've reduced my tremors by maybe 50%. So that's just to answer a few questions as far as people ask me that all the time. Um, I'm in good health. There's no doubt about it. Life is good here in Thailand. So why do I love living here? <laughs> oh, man. There are so many reasons. I'm not a rich guy by any means. I'm not a poor man. I get able to live a comfortable life here. I love my sea view. I wouldn't have a condo without a sea view. That's a fact. What's the point of living in a seaside community and you can't see the ocean? I don't understand some people, but I'm living my dream. There's opportunities for fitness, for example. There's gyms everywhere. And some of the best, probably the most modern uh, gyms in the world are located here in, in Pattaya. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a fantastic place to live. There's no doubt about it. We, the transportation needs. Oh, I could probably make a video on that. This area is not on the, the quote, uh, bot bus route. We do have uh, bolt taxis, taxis. We have motorbike taxis. Of course, there's the opportunity for you to rent a motorbike or possibly even own one or even a car. Now, let me touch on a couple of those subjects. Okay, bot buses, for instance. It costs 10 baht to ride the bus, bot bus from point A to point B. Now, if you're going to try to go around the entire route, the driver's going to let you know that it's going to cost extra. But you can go from, let's say, North Pattaya down to Walking Street for 10 baht. That's 30 cents. It's a very good deal. Now, you can take a regular taxi, like the yellow taxi. And we normally, I use a Bolt app. But there's other apps out there that you can use. Um, and that's similar to like Lyft or Uber in the, in the USA in other parts of the world all right but bolt came up with a um, agreement with the thai government the way i understand it where they can't undercut 
the taxis, okay? But I'm telling you, if you do use the Bolt app, I always select the economy, okay? Uh, the economy drivers. It's normally a smaller car, but they arrive within within a couple minutes. And that's, that's a big deal if, if you're getting out of some place and you're on a time crunch, you need to get somewhere quick. These yellow taxi cabs, which are fine, they're normally bigger and will hold four people easily. Um, but normally they're so busy that they, they take more time to get to where you're at. And sometimes if they're already in a busy area, they may cancel out your ride, which makes it tough on you because then you have to go and uh, find another bolt driver to pick you up. So I always tell my friends and me personally, when I use Bolt, uh, to go with the economy uh, driver. More than likely, he's not going to cancel out of you for somebody else, and uh, and they're going to come pick you up. It's normally, let's say, from where I live to Walking Street, it's probably going to be about 150 baht. That's about $5. The use of taxis and Bolt drivers and motorbike taxis, they they have great benefits. And the one thing you do not want to do here is drink and drive. All right. You're going to get caught up in a checkpoint or something like that and have to take a breathalyzer test. It's probably if you get caught drinking and driving, it's probably going to cost you a minimum, a minimum of 20,000 baht, which is about 600 US dollars. Don't do it. It's not worth it. The money situation is not worth it. The repercussions later on, especially if your home countries find out about it and you get it put on your record. And of course, and of course, drinking and driving is bad. It's just plainly bad. Uh, people do it all the time. I'm not condoning it by any means. Okay. But you're taking your life or possibly somebody else's life at risk and it's just not worth it. Cost of living is a whole nother thing here. I'll tell you what, I, I am fortunate that I own my own condo. So, you know, besides my common area fees, now that costs me about 20,000 baht a year or about 600 US dollars. Now there's other things to take into consideration. Things like uh, homeowner's insurance, for instance, electric bills, water bills, cable. My building has high, high speed fiber optic lines installed in it, which is great. But the building behind me there at Park Beach, they don't have that. So dealing with cost of living, of course, there's medical uh, insurance, for instance, car insurance, um, if you own a car, uh, motorbike insurance, if you own that, title and registrations for, for those type of items as well. My property tax, it's not even worth even hardly telling you it's so cheap here. Okay, it was like uh, 450 baht, which is about $14 for the year. My electric bill runs normally about 2,000 baht a month. That's about 60 US dollars. Then I have my water bill. That's another 200 baht or so. That comes out to be about $6. I live on a personal budget and I try to stick to that budget as much as I can. People have asked me, what do I live on? I live on approximately 3,000 US dollars a month. So there are definitely people here that live on all different types of budgets. Sometimes you just don't make or you only have a certain amount of money to live on. So you have to live on that amount. I've been responding to comments concerning budgets and how somebody can live here on $1,000 a month. Now, is it possible? Yes. Do I want to do it? No. No, absolutely not. Uh, there are guys here that do that. That's all they make every month is $1,000. That's what they have available to them, and they make it work. Now, I was talking in a comment earlier today about a, uh, a friend of mine that lives in this, in this building, okay, uh, named Jerry. Uh, now, his available budget is $2,100 a month, okay, which is, which is pretty good overall. So 
he doesn't like to go out too much. He loves his condo. He's kind of like me, okay? He's a higher floor. He has a great sunset. Uh, he, he loves his movies, okay? He loves them. He, he goes crazy with his movies. And he likes to read books as well, all right? He loves ice cream. He talks, every time I, I go up there, he offers me a different type of ice cream. Oh, Tom, you have to try this. Okay. <laughs> he is enjoying his life. His, this He's living the life he wants to live. All right. And um, he has a, 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 not really a girlfriend, but a lady that comes over every week and stays with him usually overnight. And, uh, and he has a great time. Okay. And and I, I want to think Jerry is, oh, I don't know, maybe about 58 or maybe 60 years old, something like that. And he really loves living here in Thailand. And, and someday I need to have him on this channel just to let him talk and tell you about what he does. But, so we're sitting there over a beer. Now, here's something else about Jerry. Jerry drinks one beer a week. <laughs> you know? I don't know how he does it, but, but, but that's his lifestyle. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, he's, a, he's a unique guy and, and, uh, and you have to appreciate his love for life. There's no doubt about it. But he told me last week that he's a, able to save approximately a thousand dollars a month. Okay. Out of his budget. So he's only using eleven hundred dollars one thousand one hundred dollars a month for everything that that he has now so living on a thousand dollars a month is doable again would i want to do it no absolutely not i love to play golf now everybody tells you you have to be rich to play golf and I think in the U.S., maybe that's true. I'm not, I'm not sure. I can't remember. The last time I played golf in the U.S., uh, I was just a, a pretty young guy, a teenager. Uh, but here in Thailand, we have some, uh, some of the world's best golf courses, okay, designed by all the top pros. And you can get on a golf course for somewhere between $20 and maybe $100 for 18 holes with with a caddy and a cart now is that affordable well the lower end for me the lower end okay um thirty dollars twenty dollars is affordable okay i don't play the high-end courses like the siam country clubs or the chichan and uh phoenix and things like that 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 cost a hundred dollars if you go out there um and then you have a, a tip that you have to give your caddy which Golf can be expensive. I'm sure all over the world, it can be expensive. Here, I think it's more reasonable, and that's the reason why so many people come to Thailand to play golf. Obviously, there's all kinds of things to do here, okay? You can go out to Koh Larn, that island out behind me, it's seven kilometers out. I think I mentioned this on an early, earlier video. You can take a speedboat out there, and they cost 150 baht per person, okay? And... Um, that, that's about $5 US, and it takes about 15 minutes to get out there. Now, the speedboat's a choppier ride, so if you're prone to seasickness, you probably want to take the ferry, which is down at Bally High Pier, okay? Bally High Pier, it's about 10 minutes away from here, and they have a ferry that runs out there every couple hours. It takes about 40, 45 minutes to get out there. It costs, I, I think it's 40 baht, uh, let's say a dollar twenty. Per person to go out um, to Kolarn Island, and um, and you probably won't get seasick riding that. Now you're touching back on the transportation. Now I own my own motorbike, okay, but you can rent a motorbike. A motorbike costs maybe two thousand baht, which is let's say sixty U.S. dollars, to three thousand baht, um, which is about ninety U.S. dollars a month. They're easy to ride, okay? But um, it's required by law here that you have a driver's license. Now, if you're on holiday, 
you definitely want to come here with an international driver's license. But if you live here and have a chance to go to the U.S. while you're there, get an international driver's license. Come back here and you can transfer that international driver's license to a Thai driver's license. Okay, which is going to, for your first time, is going to be two years after that two-year license expires. You can upgrade that to a five-year license. The key is to get your international driver's license so you can transfer it over. Um, otherwise, you're going to have to go through a massive amount of testing and, and a procedure that just takes too long. Right now, there are massive lines of Department of Transportation as far as getting your driver's license is concerned. I would recommend using an agent if possible. But check them out. There's all kinds of agents. I would look at their reviews online and make sure that they're the right one for you. But if you're worried about spending the extra few baht, all right, then you can do it yourself. And you can go over there and spend the entire day doing it. And uh, But you're going to get it accomplished, okay? But the license is a good deal because if you don't have a license, the police are going to stop you and they're going to ticket you, okay? And you're going to think it's uh, corruption or, or whatever. But um, they don't care, okay? They want their, their, their money, and they're going to get their money for you to continue on. If you decide to own your own motorbike, there's things that kind of go along with that, that, that that's expected, okay? You have things like there's a, a mandatory, a compulsory uh, insurance policy that's by the government. Now, it's very cheap, and it doesn't cover very much. As a Falong, as a Westerner, okay, I, I really recommend that you get an additional a supplement insurance policy through one of the reputable companies around here, uh, just in case something happens. You have to remember that if you're involved in an accident in Thailand, it's your fault, okay? And people will complain, 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 and argue this fact. But you're a foreigner in Thailand. Okay, and if you weren't here, more than likely that accident wouldn't have happened, and that's the way they look at it. So, don't try to fight it. You know, just go with it and press on. Get get a supplemental insurance. Okay, with a good reputable company, um, and and you won't have any problems. There's going to be other things uh, associated with with owning a motorbike. Uh, every year, you're going to have to pay your registration. And after three years, or if you if you bought a used motorbike, for instance, that was three years old, you're going to have to have it inspected every year. So there's fees that go with that. But these fees that I'm talking about, they are so cheap, okay? Um, you're talking about maybe 300 baht, $9, $10, something like that, for the compulsory insurance the inspection's another, I don't know, 100 baht or 200 baht, something like that. I can't remember exactly. Um, another 5 or $6. Uh, you know, so if, if you have maintenance that you haven't done for a while, they're probably going to check it. Um, and things like brakes or tires or that type of stuff. If your tires are below that safety threshold, they're going to let you know, and they're probably not going to pass the bike unless you, you get those items fixed. And it's for your own good. You should go get those items fixed. It's too cheap to keep a motorbike here in good condition. When I moved to Thailand, I was certain that I would never own another automobile again in my life. Not in Thailand. Okay. Um, but for whatever reason, I ended up buying one. And then I bought another one. And I bought another one. But right now, I, I have an Isuzu D-Max pickup truck. I love it. Most expats here would recommend never buying an automobile here in Thailand. And the main reason why is because people think they're going to use it, but they never use it. All right. I have a buddy of mine that lives over in the next building over, and he has a little MG uh, car that basically is there for when his relatives arrive that he can go pick them up at the airport. Other than that, he very seldom ever uses it. I think in the last three years, he's driven at about 5,000 kilometers. So you have to kind of determine how much you're actually going to use it. Most people would say when you're ready or need to use a vehicle, 
okay, rent a vehicle or hire a driver for that fact. It's so cheap to do here. That way you don't have to pay for the insurance and the maintenance and, and taxes or um, the, um, you don't have to pay for the registration or things like that. Uh, my insurance for my pickup truck, I just paid it yesterday, I believe. It was 15,000 uh, baht, which is about 500 US dollars. Okay, and that covers me for the entire year. Now my, my, my registration in, in that is probably gonna be around two or 3,000 baht, which I'll do in the next couple weeks. I actually use my vehicle though. Uh, when, I, when I bought this vehicle, it had 7,000 kilometers on it. Now it has 66,000 kilometers on it. I love driving around Thailand. I love exploring. Uh, I really have a good time. Amazing Thailand. Okay, another area I think that it's worth touching on, medical insurance. Now I'm very fortunate, okay? I have medical insurance from the military, from the U.S. military, um, and uh, that covers me. And, um, and I also have the VA uh, that covers me here, okay? Um, but other people are not as fortunate. And I have to tell you that most of the expats I know don't have medical insurance. And it, it's, it's a horrible situation because I have a good friend of mine, a very good friend, a, a mentor, a, um, uh, a guy that I look to as, as a almost like father figure, okay? And he was put in a situation where he just can't afford medical insurance anymore because of his age and health conditions and things like that. Um, guys like that can't afford to go to the hospital because uh, they can't leave, you know, and the hospitals are not going to let them leave unless they can pay the bill. So is medical insurance important? Absolutely. It absolutely is. You know, if something major happens to you, um, you need a way to pay for it, okay? And, and guys point out all the time, uh, you need it. For me personally, you have to have a lump sum uh, kind of stashed away in the bank and, and you have to prepay your, your medical costs uh, before you leave. And then I have to file a claim later on and my insurance company pays me back. Okay. And they're not going to pay it all back to me. They're going to pay a percentage back to me. But, but regardless, um, for young guys, do I think it's especially important? You know, that's going to be up to, you, up to you to decide. More than likely, a young guy is probably not going to have as much medical problems as, say, an older guy will. Now, these older guys, they need it. They absolutely need it. I have another friend of mine that, that pays 100,000 baht, that's th uh, over 3,000 U.S. dollars a year for his medical insurance here in Thailand. Now... He's over 80 years old, okay? And he's had medical insurance the entire time he's been here. He's been here like 20 years. So if, if you arrive here, and let's say you're 72 years old, the chances of you getting medical insurance here is pretty low. I could be wrong, and I'm sure people are going to correct me. So many people come here with no medical insurance, okay? Um, and you have to figure out what is best for your situation that's for sure um yeah it, it's it's a tough call it really is and uh and there's lots of companies out here um you have the etna you have uh the axa um, you have pacific cross uh, that you can look up online and find out what it costs for you to have medical insurance here okay I'm going to try to wrap this, this video up here shortly, but there's things that go along in the cost of living here that you have to kind of figure out, okay? Uh, things like food costs. Can you eat locally or do you need to have steak and lobster uh, every night? Um, can, can you eat pad thai or eat street food, for instance? Can you go to the local markets and eat? Uh, that's what I do. Okay, I, I eat um, I eat street food. 
I eat out. I eat a little bit of everything. Going out for drinks is another subject that you have to consider. Are you a drinker? Do you drink alcohol? Okay. If you drink alcohol, you have to plan for more money in your budget just for the alcohol. And then if you go to the bars and you're in groups of people or there's even ladies there, are you going to be buying drinks for other people? Are you going to be buying lady drinks? A lady drink is going to cost at least a hundred baht more than whatever the normal drink costs. Okay, so let's say they drink, a lady would normally drink something that costs 50 baht, about a dollar 50. Okay, um, they're going to add an extra 100 baht to that for the lady drink cost. That's going to be 150 baht. Now it's a five dollar drink. Okay, the lady at the end of the night is going to get a percentage of that drink, about 50 baht, a dollar ten back, and the bar is going to make even more money on it. How many of those lady drinks can you afford to buy tonight? Of course, most of the people I know have bought a lady drink or two or three or 100 in the past. <laughs> but in all honesty, that can add up. And if you're on a strict budget, you can't afford to be doing that, okay? <clears throat> when you start adding the mix of female companionship into your lifestyle here, then the price is going to go up, way up, okay? And, uh, and, and I think that's true no matter where you're at. Uh, but, but those are the type of things that you have to take into consideration. Most of my friends... Uh, they don't have steady girlfriends, okay? And they see uh, one or two different girls every week. Uh, they don't want to be tied down. You have to be able to live within your means here, okay? So whatever relationship you decide to get into while you're in Thailand, uh, be responsible, okay? Know how much you have to spend. Uh, don't, don't let uh, the girls, okay, um, the lady boys, partners, whatever, whatever your relationship status is, that other half talk you into something, talk you into something that you can't afford. Stay, stay on your budget. All right. For the most part, everybody lives a good life in Thailand. What are you waiting for? And one other thing. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. You don't know how much this is helping me. And, uh, and hit that like button when you can. And um, thank you very much for watching. And if you see anything that I can do better or think of topics for me to talk about or do videos, videos on, please let me know in the comment section.